Hello, and thank you for joining us today for the June PBCS updates with eCapital Advisors. My name is Eric Milbrand, and joining me today is Jay Adler, and we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves in the coming slides. We will be taking over the Oracle PBCS webinar thus far, and you'll also find some contact information about us here as well. So with that, we'll jump right into it. So real quick, in case people tuning in are not aware, we are a consulting firm specializing in enterprise performance management as well as other areas such as advisory, cloud, private cloud, data visualization, and really many spheres of the analytics landscape. We really strive to build long-term relationships with our clients, and to us that means achieving what we call full partnership. We really strive to learn our partners and clients' full business in order to achieve that partnership, and I think that that really helps us become a great and trusted partner with our clients, you know, beyond just one or two implementations. We really seek to understand the full technology as well as the business landscape of those that we work with. We look to take our commitment beyond technical deliverables and really make sure that we're driving organizational satisfaction at all levels of the organization, all the way from that entry-level financial analyst role all the way up to those CFO and beyond reporting roles. So a few more quick facts about us. We are an established organization founded in 2001. We are right around that 80 plus employee mark with teams in at least 14 states. We're about a $25 million company based on revenue and we are actively growing with about 300 plus global customers. So again, we, we delve deeper beyond just that technology implementation role in the areas of not only performance management but business analytics through architecture, data governance, predictive analytics, visualization, self-service. We provide infrastructure and architecture services, implementations and upgrades to existing software as well as brand new full rollouts. We have an eCapital University offering which allows people to attend training on site from our clients through regular course offerings, as well as advisory through business road mappings and full business understanding, as well as hosting services and managed services, some more traditional technology offerings. Throughout our time since 2001, eCapital has worked in a, a number of industries through multiple clients in each industry. We kind of split that out into retail, healthcare, financial, manufacturing, education, and transportation. What that means is we have a breadth of experience that relates to one specific industry as well as many specific industries. And so while not every organization is the same, there are some things that are similar. Everybody is manufacturing things or selling things. And we understand the different niche markets that different industries operate in and what those nuances can be as a starting point. So the idea is that through these industry experiences and the aggregated knowledge we've compiled about those industries, we can get up and running and, and boots on the ground faster at a, a newer existing client in any of these industries as we continue to grow our relationships. So here's a good NASCAR slide just expanding on the previous slide. As, as can be gleaned from this slide, we, you know, through those 17 or so years in business and 300 plus customers, we've worked with a very large sampling of fortune companies doing business in multiple industries. This means, again, that we have a nice breadth of experience as well as a nice set of available clients for things like reference calls or just knowledge for us to draw on through things like case studies and just, again, deepening our general knowledge of one individual space. As I kind of mentioned, as we kicked off the webinar this month, we are the new owners of the PBCS webinar for eCapital. My name is Eric Milbrandt, and you'll be hearing Jay Adler's voice later in this webinar. I'm a senior EPM consultant with eCapital. I've been here for a little over five years. And, and prior to that, in my previous lives, I was a business banker for a large company, and I've also held technology roles for companies focusing on supply chain technology. So I bring a finance degree as well as about 10 years of business and finance experience to eCapital. And I'll let Jay Adler do a quick intro about himself quick here. Uh, hi everyone, so my name is Jay Adler. I'm a consultant also here at eCapital. Um, I've been with eCap for about three years now, working on different implementations, uh, upgrades and supports for various uh, technological projects involving mainly Oracle EPM. Um, and thank you. Thanks, Jay. So now that we've kind of set the table about eCapital for those of us that might be joining us new, 
let's kind of jump into what the goal of this monthly cast is, which is the PVCS webinar. We're really looking to expose folks that may have not had any experience or exposure to the cloud product offering, as well as help those that have keep track or keep their thumb on any upcoming updates to the system that may affect their EPM landscapes as they have cubes and active business processes in the cloud. So what we do is we look to release what the updates are and a quick analysis of each and then offer the opportunity for anybody to reach out for additional background while these new components are available for testing in your test environment prior to the rollout in production. Some months we're closer to the deadline than others, and we apologize for that, but we do strive to, again, get these updates out prior to them rolling out into the full production landscape. Usually the window is about two weeks. And so again, the PBCS product offering is really Oracle planning s space in the cloud. It's kind of grown over the years and, and offered some other technologies as well, which we'll get into a little bit. But again, it really offers some nice, streamlined, simplified interfacing, some built-in dashboarding, web forms, Excel interfacing, a lot of the things that people who have used the planning in SBase and Greater Hyperion Suite are used to. There's also FDCS, which is the HFM product in the cloud. There's also an Oracle BI product as well. And so these products are now maturing as they've been out for a number of years and really stepping into prime time for not only those large but mid-sized organizations as well due to the different subscription models. So some reasons why you may choose PBCS over an on-prem, especially if you're a newer customer that does not currently have Hyperion, is that there's potential for faster innovation, meaning that instead of waiting for a major release or bug fixes and patches to come out year to year, or you know, as we know, moving from different major releases on-prem has taken quite a while, they are basically pushing updates and upgrades monthly in the PBCS environments. So because of that, what we have is a modern global platform that lends itself well to shorter upgrade cycles and getting high requests or high need upgrades or bug fixes in very iteratively, very quickly, month to month. Because of this, deployment is faster. There's no on-premise infrastructure that needs to happen, no procurement of servers, CPUs, RAM, and everything that goes with that, disk and backups as well. Everything is pre-installed and pre-configured within Reason and ready to be fully customized to any individual organization's needs. Integration within Cubes on the platform is seamless, as well as the ability to integrate with on-prem FDMEE, which is kind of the on-premise version of the cloud data management product, which we actually have an update coming on this month. Because of these things, as well as some other things, cost is lower, again, that reduced infrastructure cost. IT maintenance costs are almost non-existent compared to an on-prem implementation. Customization and upgrade costs go down. And there's just a lower overall risk with the administrative burden. There's a guaranteed system availability and uptime and guaranteed scalability, so we're not reaching back into the well, again, with IT departments for additional resources as user base or calculation requirements grow or as we need more power. Oracle is adjusting those things on the fly with very powerful back-end Exolytics hardware. Another thing with the downtime is that it is communicated in advance so that anytime there's gonna be a system outage, there would be you know, 24 to 48, if not more time, 24 to 48 hours, excuse me, if not more time in order to prepare for that you know, and get communication out to the teams that may be affected. What we have found again is that uptime is generally 24 seven means 24 seven, which is a big concern, so we're happy to report that. Also, don't forget about ePBCS, which is the Enterprise Planning and Budgeting Cloud Service. And what that is, is it's just a slightly more robust platform that costs a little more. It's a different licensing model and includes some additional pre-built modules, such as financials, uh, CapEx planning, workforce planning, some project tracking and planning, and then some longer-term strategic modeling applications. And again, the, the differences are large in some areas and not as large in others other than subscription and pricing but we would love to help anyone that has questions concerning the differences between PBCS and ePBCS, evaluate what those are and what they mean to your organization and assist you in making the best choice for, for each individual use case. Again, for those who don't know, one of the biggest benefits of the Hyperion product suite, especially as it relates to accounting and finance, is that there are these 
very, very well-built, tested, and upgraded SmartView add-ins that integrate directly with Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. Excel being the big one, obviously, folks working in accounting and finance have a ton of experience in Excel. A, a bulk of industry reporting is done through Excel, and so having direct integration with financial databases in Excel is something that I find, as well as our clients find, has been hugely beneficial. Also, in assisting with month-to-month -month reporting to executives, board of directors, Etc. There is a nice PowerPoint integration feature, which does allow slides to just be refreshed and updated with the database every month. So that's also a nice feature. Word has some tables and things that are similar, but there's just not a lot of use cases for Word that aren't accounted for through the Excel and PowerPoint um, use cases. So with that, we'll get into today's webinar, which is getting into mostly the new features and what they mean, helping you check those out, and helping you be prepared for that rollout. So here's a nice image and table of contents that comes in the Oracle documentation every month, which you can actually register for. What it's going to include is not only what the updates are, but maybe what the upcoming changes would be, which is a newer feature this month, any potential defects fixed, or support that might be being removed for certain features will also be included here, which we don't have this month, but we also would cover those things as well. In order to kind of stay in the loop and get these things, we kind of recommend registering for that and also registering for the Oracle Cloud Customer Connect. Again, it encompasses this release info, any upcoming events that may be relevant to you, the organization that you work for, as well as, again, events in your area for the products related to, that you, to the products that you own. There are also access to forums and a, and a great user community to troubleshoot issues and just kind of communicate as a whole user community to connect and and find out what's been working and what's not maybe been working for others. This is something you can connect to through the home page of your PBCS instance. And if you have the cloud or evaluating the cloud, the PBCS or ePBCS products, I would highly recommend that you do make sure you are registered for these, these beneficial release tools. Oracle also does a really good job of collecting and listening to feedback regarding the cloud products. They very much welcome suggestions and comments, to, again, to improve the content of not only the products, but the what's new documents and the product documents in general. And you can see that that is something they look to receive at that EPM doc underscore WW at oracle.com. In the body or title of that email, they're just looking for senders to state that they're inquiring or providing feedback for one of the EPM cloud products, as well as the monthly update cycle documentation. So we would encourage anyone that has strong feelings to pass along comments to that URL because they do take it very seriously. So with that, we'll get into this month's upgrade cycle, June 1 being the rollout for the new features and tests, and June 15th as the scheduled date for the rollout into production. So this month, there is a brand new SmartView version being rolled out. Again, this is very easy to download and is accessed directly through your, your cloud instance. And there's, again, some screenshots here on how to do that if anyone is unclear on what that means. Some things coming with this month's Smart View upgrade are a move formatting enhancement. So as we know, that move Excel formatting option under advanced has caused some performance impacts in the past. And my advice is generally to make sure that that box is not checked. But there is an enhancement coming by mid-June, which will notify a user when it's causing big performance issues. Again, kind of a nice visual cue, making sure that people know to turn that off. So we'll look to show what that looks like when the release does launch. There's also an improved resolution on high definition devices, pro tablets, iPads, et cetera, making sure that Details, reporting, and analysis tools are easier to see on your mobile devices as well as tablets. There's also going to be a new health check system, which will show some general information, and some settings geared toward improving performance and reducing flickering. So we look forward to delving into more detail what that looks like when it does become available just in probably a short week or two here in mid-June, as Oracle states. The next update. As documented, it's the snapshot retention policy. So this will now be part of daily maintenance, which will automatically delete snapshots older than 60 days by default, with the goal of keeping accumulation of large snapshots less than 150 gigabytes. So again, by default, the snapshots created or uploaded externally to an environment will be stored for a period not exceeding 60 days, after which they will be automatically removed. The daily maintenance process will be automatically removing these, oldest first, again, preventing the total size from exceeding 150 gigabytes, which will adversely, potentially, at least, impact an environment. And just, again, keep cloud storage down. So that is a ton of snapshots, but we would encourage anyone that has 
very elementary or important components of their application backed up solely in the cloud to come up with a strategy to move those to a local shared driver machine or something like that to prepare for this. The next update is regarding task lists. So through the simplified interface, which is what the PBCS suite uses, the task list has now been expanded to include some new task types, such as refreshing an application, importing or exporting, copying data version to version, viewing a job console to ensure things have been completed, such as business rules or copies or things like that, or the dimension editor option. So these, are, again, are mostly features that assist a user in navigating to different facets of the PBCS application in a list-by-list -list format to keep somebody on track and, and make sure getting someone up to speed on new tasks is as simple as possible. So we would encourage everyone to explore these. Some of these are more related potentially to an administrative role, such as refreshing an application or, or editing dimensions, but checking a job console to ensure calculations of run or copying version data has happened is definitely something that we've seen more users or power users getting involved in. So if, if anyone is using task lists, we would encourage them to check out the new features to make sure that you know, they're not missing things they could be taking advantage of. Another new update in June is the POV bar within dashboards. So not a ton of difference here, just some more intuitive feature thought process going on here. So as we can see that go arrow highlighted on the top right of the screenshot here will only light up now if the user has actually made a change. In the example here, I've just changed the product to data recovery and you can see that that's also now highlighted in yellow in order to show what's changed. So again, Oracle just adding some more visual cues as to what's changed and making sure that it's very easy for the eye to be drawn to what's actually going on if, if you're interrupted or, or you're having a lot of things going on. It's kind of removing what those questions are. And the final update I will talk about today without turning it over to Jay is in my, I believe our opinion, probably the more or most impactful update for this month's release. So as many of you probably know, data management is the PBCS or EPBCS tool that is very similar to what we know as the on-premises FDMEE. And basically these are the new age tools that have replaced FDQM from the older versions. So if anyone's unclear, that's financial data management enterprise edition replacing the older financial data quality management additions from earlier 11 and beyond versions. So what's actually happened here is that you can now execute business rules which contain calculations maybe like currency conversions or aggregations as part of your load process. This is very similar to what FDMEE has rolled out a while back and I've actually written a blog that can be referenced as well for more information on that and the link is here. But again, what this is doing is it's allowing either by data rule or by application, planning business rules to be launched either or after the load and in sequence as well. So it could be one or many rules, just assigning a one, two, you know, et cetera, sequential value in order to get those launched. And again, I dive into what that looks like in the on-prem FDME, which is very similar to this in the blog link below. So I'd encourage you to check that out as well if it's interesting to you. But this does really assist in automation and removing the need or at least lessening the need for third-party automation tools to run things like calculation scripts and business rules. So with that, I will turn it over to Jay Adler. Thank you, Eric. So uh, continuing along today with the June updates that Oracle will be pushing out to both PBCS and EPBCS, uh, the next set of updates that we have are also uh, related to administrative activities, the first of which being uh, having to do with navigation flow in the simplified interface. Um, so what we're talking about here is, is your ability to kind of tailor your workflow in the interface um, to your users based on workflow and uh, being, able to, being able to set that based on user access, which you define. Um, so the update that we have on this for this month would be in navigation flows, um, when you're actually setting up those cards and clusters, which are then used uh, in your interface to navigate um, you know, each, each specific process that a user would be going through. Um, we're looking at just a little bit more of a cleanup of the interface in, in setting up the, the artifacts that you choose from to define those cards. So when you're in your navigation flows and you go to set up, set up a card that would be then used to, to access from your main page, um, just having the ability here to actually go and select, select artifacts and having that library show up in what is now a hierarchical manner. As um, so you can see from that screenshot here that you've got your forms laid out, in this case, uh, in the hierarchy in which they were designed, whereas previously there was a bit more manual effort required to kind of uh, drill in and get to what you're looking for to, to quickly define um, these cards. So 
uh, just something to streamline, streamline setting up these cards a little bit more moving forward as of June. Uh, the next update we have is related to um, some more flexibility around smart view um, and system settings. Specifically, one setting which is out there right now, which is um, an application management option uh, having to do with both deleting, being able to delete your application and update or refresh your application via the smart view interface. Um, so the way that this is typically done is looking at that uh, panel in your right side navigation window in smart view. Um, and actually doing a right click on the application. Um, currently, you have the options out there to both delete and update the app. Um, now, what Oracle is, is giving us the ability to do is actually uh, define via the web interface um, whether or not we want that option available to administrators. Um, so now you're able to go into uh, to the web and basically toggle whether or not you want to suppress those application management options. Um, and I think uh, they even mentioned along with their release notes for this month that um, there's some confusion and accidental clicking that was going on um, within there. So someone somewhere had, had issues with, with these options being in, in this location in the past, uh, especially so close to some other more commonly used options in SmartView. So um, just a bit more flexibility here, uh, being able to suppress that and uh, not accidentally delete your application, which I know um, is, is probably a good thing for most of us. Uh, the next couple updates that we have are related to um, settings around bursting financial reporting documents via batches um, in PBCS. Uh, so the first update that we have here is just a little, um, a little update to options that you have when setting up batch reporting. Um, so out of your financial web reporting studio, uh, you'll now be able to go in and, and select when you're, when you're managing uh, bursting reports. Uh, the maximum email attachment size that you're able to use. Um, and this actually goes up to 50 for attachments now, so you'll be able to actually get an, an increased number of workbooks that you're able to send out now, along with being able to set exactly what that's going to be. Um, again, this is managed through the Financial Web Reporting Studio, um, as well as this next update, uh, which is, again, from the same exact interface here, uh, which would be the server settings out of the, the Reporting Studio. Um, this update is related to timestamps on your batch output file for financial reporting. So when you are sending out those scheduled updates, whether it's weekly, monthly, um, and defining your, your POVs and, and getting those reports out to users, uh, typically your, your output file from the batch would automatically include the timestamp. Now, again, just another piece of flexibility for this month's release, uh, you're able to define if you do want um, that timestamp on that zip file um, output or not. So that actually does it for the new features being released in June of 2018 uh, from Oracle this month. Um, next we'll get into a little bit of support, uh, which is only a light update for this month. So for those of you who have joined us before, you've probably been seeing so far this year uh, this one up here, um, which is that that classic dimension editor uh, will be having its support pulled in the coming months. Um, this has been pushed back a few times. Now I think Oracle is targeting um, the October timeframe. Um, to actually remove support for that classic, classic dimension editor, um, meaning that metadata management via the outline will be will have to happen through that PBCS or ePBCS web interface now, uh, which we hope at this point you're all getting comfortable with. And from an overall standpoint, that does it for all of the, the updates for this month. Um, so just a reminder about, about our, our webinar series here. What we're really looking to do at ECAP is, is get through those Oracle release notes um, and dive in via our own environment, um, really doing the testing, the testing for you to make sure that you can be prepared uh, for the updates coming out to your implementation month to month here. Um, really looking to get you to, to maximize your investment in the technology, uh, you know, get the most out of the information that your organization has, and uh, leverage new functionality as it, as it hits your implementation month to month, and also, you know, hope to educate you a bit on, on some of the utility of the tools uh, for a new implementation as well. Um, so with that, you know, we encourage you to, to go head out to our website and subscribe to this webinar series. Um, you know, we encourage you to go out and look at, look at all the past webinars that we put on too so that you can stay up to date um, with the, the comings and goings of, of uh, PBCS and ePBCS uh, for Oracle. Um, and on our website as well, you'll be able to get the links to our eCapital YouTube page where we do have, you know, a wealth of knowledge out there for you as well.
Uh, we'd also encourage you to look at our webinar that we put out for uh, the PBCS, what we consider the top enhancements of 2017, so from last year. Um, a lot of good information packed in here. Um, really gives you a good, a good look at you know, what came out last year, and then we'll look to, to continue this again um, this year, just making sure that you know, you're as educated as possible. Um, so uh, we look forward to that. And then uh, we're going to wrap up here, but uh, we encourage you, myself and Eric and eCapital, to reach out for any questions that you may have on this month's update or any questions uh, regarding the Oracle Planning and Budgeting Cloud service offerings in general. Um, we're more, to, more than happy to get back to you and start to have a conversation about uh, your existing technology, any, any business needs that you might have, um, you know, as well as any, any technical topics as well. So. Uh, Thanks for joining us this month, and uh, we definitely look forward to, to having you back for next month, so thank you.